Kanye West faces some real life problems right now, some life threatening problems if we really look at it. The other day, a clip touched down online of him saying that he was on the nitrous. And if you don't know what he was talking about in that clip, it was basically a different form of whippets. And if you don't know what that is, it's laughing gas. It's the laughing gas they give you at the dentist when you got a cavity or something. And of course, anything that's used to numb pain or relieve it will be a And nitrous oxide is something that's been used for a long time now. Steve-O had a real bad problem with it back in the early 2000s. Steve-O said it was a point in time where he was going through 600 nitrous cartridges in 24 hours. See, on the surface, this may seem like a man who discovered a new drug and fell victim to it. But in reality, it go a lot deeper than that. I'm talking about this might get legal. The other day, a person came to Twitter speaking on Ye and the problems he was facing in real deep detail. A man named Milo. This ain't no random. This ain't some that's just off the streets. This a man that's been locked in with Ye for years at this point. Back in 2020, Milo started working with Ye after he failed during his whole presidential run. But since 2022, he had been working for Ye. And for two years, he worked under Yeezy. He worked under the whole brand. Until a few months ago in May where he came out announcing that he resigned from the company. And this could have been one of the first signs that something was wrong with Ye because what he did was out of pocket. He came out, said he resigned from the company because Ye was trying to open an adult entertainment section in the company. And Milo whole resignment letter became public. Milo said, I cannot be complicit in the production of P films for moral and religious reasons, but also because such material and the kind of people involved in this production represent an imminent danger to my health as a recovering addict and an unacceptable risk to my spiritual and physical health as a formal homosexual. I tender my resignation. I would deliver an orderly handover by Friday, May 31st, 2024. Order first, pea shoot, whichever is sooner. If at some time in the future, the company publicly and permanently abandons any plan to produce, distribute, or profit from this obscene content, it will be an honor to serve you again. That was that. He left the company. He said he was a former homosexual. He couldn't be around that no more, so he left. And if I'm being honest, yeah, I know I said it was out of pocket, but this is gay. Yeah, he is doing this, and this is not a surprise because this is the same nigga that said back in 2022, he was addicted to pee and it destroyed his family. He got on IG and said, don't let Chris make you do Playboy like she made Kyle and Kim do Hollywood. He destroyed my family. I deal with addiction. Instagram promotes it. I'm not going to let it happen in Northern Chicago. And this wasn't even like a one-off thing. It's a history of this man fighting his pee addiction. Even in 2019, he was battling the same addiction. But he came out and said, God cured. Life for me, Playboy was my gateway into full-on P addiction. My dad had a Playboy left it out at age five. And this affected almost every choice I made for the rest of my life. From age five to now having a kick to have it. And it just presents itself in the open like it's okay. And I stand up and say, no, it's not okay. It's like, with God, I've been able to beat these things that had full control of me. You know, that Playboy that I found when I was five years old was written all over the moment when I was in MTV Awards with Timberlands and the Balmain jeans before people was walking Balmain jeans in a Hennessy bottle. It was like such an outer script of a rock star's life. But all of this brings us to 2024. Milo came out just a few days ago on August 7th and told everything. The threat of him talking about Ye and all of his problems got over 11 million views. He came to Twitter and said, there is a reason Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, is no longer capable of successfully releasing music or clothing. We can dig into that. Over this past year, this whole Vultures rollout been terrible. Ye and Ty had been teasing this album for a minute. A lot of 2023 was them two teasing and talking about the album, right? They even dropped a single for the album. Had niggas getting their hopes up. Had people like, oh, they might be dropping this. That man even did a listening party for the whole album. He played all these different songs that didn't get cleared when the official album came out. So people was excited for all of these songs that didn't even get to be put on the album. But that wasn't the only thing he pulled. He came out and gave a date, a confirmation date. He said this album dropping December 15th. And this wasn't like, oh, he just said it. It wasn't just word of mouth. That album was available for pre-save on streaming services. So people excited. They're like, damn, new Kanye album finna come but out. But soon after he announced this date and everybody got excited for it, it disappeared. And the album got pushed back. It got pushed back to January 12th. But that time period between these two dates ain't come without no problems. See, there was this one song he wanted to get put on the album so bad. He wanted nobody with him and Nicki Minaj to get put on this album. But Nicki ain't want to clear it. But why didn't she want to clear it? It had to be a reason, right? Well, let's go back years. And if you watch my Ice Spice video, this is going to be familiar to it. The song New Body got recorded years ago. It leaked, became a grill. Niggas loved the song. The song went viral. And New Body was a strange case like Kid Cudi by Cardi and Nudie. If you remember that song, it went viral. The leaked version was at the top of the charts on Spotify. And that's just how the song went. People loved it. I guarantee you, if you play this song for any Nicki fan, they're going to know all the lyrics. And so when time came for 
Yeah, to try to get this feature out. Nikki wasn't having it. She was like, this song been out. Niggas been heard this. Everybody knows every lyric to this song. And the ship say, I don't want to drop the song no more. So she didn't clear. The thing about nobody, nobody's already, nobody's already out. <laughs> and y'all know damn well y'all play it and y'all done illegally got it, child. Why are y'all asking for something that y'all got? And y'all, when he was doing, when he was more into his gospel era, he asked me to change that iconic, immaculate verse into a gospel verse. I should have been said no. But I did it out of my respect for him. And then he still had, you know, I didn't love the verse. But I was in the middle of trying to work on my album. And I said, you know, respectfully, I'm not, I'm not doing another verse. I'm not writing another verse. I'm not thinking about it ever again. You know, it's okay. The ship has sailed. But back to the release date, January 12th. This day came around, and a surprise to no one, the album did not come out. But a month after this, past even more controversy, the album did come out. But with Kanye, of course, that wasn't it. Throughout the lifetimes of Vultures 1, this album that got took down so many times. So many songs removed, so many songs changed. Everything around this album changed. There was even a point in time where the whole album got took down. And it's really looking like everything surrounding Vultures 1 didn't really go smooth at all. Even though the album did have a number one song on there, the whole rollout was messy as hell. And for this man that's worked for Ye for years, to actually come out and have an explanation to why his rollouts have been so bad is kind of interesting. It kind of brings a new light to Ye and all of his situations. There's a reason Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, is no longer capable of successfully releasing music or clothing. In fact, there are several reasons, but the most serious and the most recent is his dentist, Thomas Connelly. Connelly got Ye hooked on nitrous. It's my belief that Connelly sought to diminish Ye's mental faculty so that Connelly and his business associates could extract millions of dollars from Earlier this year, I uncovered the fraud and intervened. Ye hooked on nitrous blew up our relationship on purpose by proposing something he knew I'd have to resign over because I had told him. The resurrection of his longtime idol fantasy of making peace. Thomas Connelly is a dangerous predator who targets African-American celebrities into whose mouth he puts fake diamonds, as I suspect he did to Lil Yachty. And I'm not gonna say Milo was 100% wrong because if you do take a look at Thomas Connelly's Instagram page, it is majority black artists. I'm not saying it's all black people, it is a lot majority. And so you're probably thinking, okay, Thomas Connelly is your dentist. Who is he? What he look like? And I'm not gonna lie to you, if I walk in the dentist's office and my dentist look like this nigga right here, I swear to God, I'm like Milo saying this dentist Thomas was allegedly illegally supplying these drugs to you trying to destroy him, trying to get money out of him. And while I was doing some digging on my own, I found some things that kind of help with this claim. See. Remember what I was talking about when people do whippets, they kind of come in some straight packaging like the galaxy gas you've been seeing niggas smoke on Twitter. But wait, yay, you seen in the clip, his don't look like that galaxy gas. His look professional. In the video with Kanye when he said, Ryan Garcia, I'm on the nitrous. This ain't normally how people on the street use that. This look like what they do to you at the dentist. It look like Ye was using medical grade nitrous based off the mask he had on. And nitrous ain't something you can just get off the street. You gotta go through a process to get medical grade nitrous that they use at the mm. dentist. But back to Milo, this ain't the only thing he said. Not only did he get on Twitter and tweet about it, he released his whole affidavit that he submitted to the California Dental Board claiming Ye Dennis supplied him drugs. In his affidavit, he dug in the Thomas background as a dentist. Thomas Canelli is a dentist licensed in California. The affidavit pertains to actions of his which include the unlawful supply of enormous qualities of nitrous gas to a wealthy, famous patient for recreational use, the public transportation of four surgical sized canisters by Corneli himself into the patient's home on just one afternoon, charging more than $50,000 a month for the service, continuing to supply the gas long after the emergence of distressing symptoms that led to widespread comment in concern. Instruction to the patient in the operation of nitrous gas containers left by Connelly at the patient's home, knowingly encouraging their use in the absence of a medical professional. A person with a history of mental illness 
and the addiction. The abandonment of said patient to the self-destructive consequences of said dependence, showing indifference or worse to the prospect of permanent damage in the brain and in body by Cornelius negligence. And malice with intent to defraud, it works. Now, I can't read every single word that he put, but I can speak on it. He basically went into even more detail on how Ye was getting these drugs, how the people around him was scamming him, how the how dentist was giving him lad-grown diamonds, charging them full price, but not only did he speak on the dentist? He was speaking on the people Ye surrounded him with. He claimed that a lot of people Ye surrounded himself with were leeches and were using him for their own good. And when Milo got promoted and was in a position to see the funding coming in and out of the Yeezy company, he started taking niggas out. He started taking niggas out the picture. After Milo seen how the money was getting moved around, he said, I let these people go. I prioritized the identification of the most egregious thefts and frauds in case that the perpetrators were still in Ye's orbit terminating their contract, including many described to me as untouchable and leeches. For example, I discovered that Paul Johnson, a former gallery owner and longtime advisor to Ye, had charged him $6 million in 2021 for Damon Hurst sculpture that could not have been worth more than $2 million, and then proceeded to claim millions of dollars a year from Ye in the years after, allegedly to oversee his archive. In fact, under Johnson, the archive was being plundered. Irreplaceable artifacts are now gone forever thanks to the losses and thefts under Johnson's tenor, including Ye's Grammy, personal effects from the births of his children, and even his mother's death certificate. Johnson done bragged to colleagues and the former CEO, Matt George, that he made millions of dollars via illegal inside trades at a Gap stock back in 2021, before Yeezy's partnership with Gap was public knowledge. Johnson had asked and received his entire 2024 salary in advance a few weeks before he took over. I terminated him after he lied to me claiming it had been Ye's idea to pay him a year's salary in advance. And because Ye was presented with a bill for nearly a million dollars in bogus storage fees, Johnson has not returned any other money, nor to my knowledge, has made any attempt to apologize for taking advantage of Ye so outrageously for so many years. And look, this whole situation, while and before I keep going on, you got to understand there are multiple sides to the story and Milo himself is not no saint. This man is a controversial figure. It's a lot of negativity surrounding his name that done got dug up. A lot of this negativity is because of his political views and some insane shit he was saying back in 2017. One article wrote this. Over the weekend, it was revealed that Milo was invited to give a speech at the 2017 CPAC. Shortly after, the conservative website Reagan Battalion resurfaced video footage of Milo defending the idea that 13 year olds have an S with older men, referencing his own story that he benefited from a freeze touching him when he was a teen. Now look, Milo got a lot of dirt on his name and I'm not even finna go into that in this video. You can do your research on this and form your own opinions against this man, but just know, like I said, that man ain't no saint, but he claimed that everything he said about Ye and the people around him was true and under oath. And there is some proof to back it up. There's video footage of someone buying Ye storage because the bill on it wasn't paid. And this wasn't no little regular storage. This had Grammys, unreleased clothes. Now, now look, look, Milo said he lost his mom's death certificate, but I didn't see that in the video, but that don't mean they didn't get it. Grammys. What? <laughs> Holy crap. Scuba sock. These are like his uh, duffel bags. So here's a bunch of music equipment. I'm hoping all this, here's what we're hoping. We're hoping all this, holy crap, that's huge. All this music. Like it might not be the one, but like the one, you know? See the neck? And then look at the neck. Bye. But this definitely was one of his storage units. They was pulling out crazy things from Ye. But it ain't just stop at this footage coming out. Messages with Eric, Ye's assistant, also got lit. Eric said, I'm just going to let him fail. He literally called me the day of the LeBoy interview and said, Milo wanted me out on some FBS. And that he ain't like that. Person test him said, what that mean? Eric said, he was off the nitrous. He said, his dentist dropped off the medical grade thing. Very bad behavior right before the interview. Eric also said, outside the door of the interview, he was on the bed, he was doing nitrous on. But like I said earlier, he came out with this whole affidavit. And when his affidavit touched down, the whole Save Ye thing started trending on Twitter. And they had a whole post floating around where they was just describing the situation and everything that went down. Disappointed with vultures. Well, that's because Ye has been supplied illegally with nitrous oxide supplied to him by his licensed California dentist. 
Thomas Connelly. This left Ye in a state of apparent brain damage that according to supposed remarks from Eric and the current Yeezy chief of staff, he is permanent. Thomas has managed to extort Ye for money, convince Ye to live with him and draw Ye into a barely conscious state in order to further extort. This has been allowed by Eric who has threatened Ye fan pages and gets spread in the story. This all been confirmed by both fan pages who have been threatened by Eric and a former Yeezy head of staff, Milo. While you may be wary of these accusations due to Milo's infamous political opinions, he has gone out of his way to swear that this information is true under oath. Reaching out to Ye directly to stop this is next to impossible as it appears that Eric is running his social media to help share this information around as much as possible. Reach out to news stations, podcasts, YouTubers, and any other relevant figures with a large platform in the following. The artist cannot create if he's slowly being killed. Hashtag save Ye. They also said Ye Grammys plus personal effects like children's birth certificates and Donda's death certificate are gone from the archive. Milo says it has been allegedly robbed by part of the team. Billy Wash was paid $1 million for his work on Vultures 1, but he allegedly don't know any of the songs from the album. Dennis' plan for Yeezy's restructure was buying a nitrous gas system charging $2.4 mm. They was using the gas even on meetings, worrying Yeezy employees. Ye's behavior started to change. Dennis was living his best life with Ye's money. Article claims that the dentist has gone bankrupt many times. Milo claims some Yeezy workers support his complaint. Also, Ye paid six months of rent to his dentist to make him live next door. Allegedly tried to hire someone to hurt Milo. The Yeezy Gap material that was seized months ago was allegedly stolen by the dentist friend. Eric said privately, Ye has permanent brain damage due to nitrous, although Milo can't assure that this is true. And like they said at the end of the post, all of this is alleged. Don't take all of this as fact because we really don't have no facts. We got this affidavit. We got words from many people. We got a lot of stuff connecting with each other, but that don't mean this is a guarantee. Even with Ye himself saying he was on the nitrous, we still don't know, but it ain't looking like this a lot because over the years, Ye has been real public with his nitrous use. He was basically on stage one time promoting it to everyone to use. But not only has Ye himself came out publicly saying that he loves and supports nitrous, there's also a post from Canelli the Dennis IG page where he has some nitrous on the screen with a caption that said, if you know, you know. And I went to check this IG and I couldn't find a post, but that don't mean he ain't deleted. But this is just a real scary situation because this could do permanent damage to Ye. I don't know how this situation gonna turn out, but just two hours ago, Milo got on Twitter and said the California Dental Board confirmed to him that there's an official investigation started against Thomas Connelly. And he shared proof of that. He posted the alleged receipts, but this is the internet. Anything can be faked. I guess only time will tell. We You'll see when the legal documents really come out about this situation. I do hope Ye get right though, because this could turn bad for him and everyone around him. And what's crazy is people starting to think they could see the effects of these problems in his music. Because the other day, he comes out, randomly drops Vultures 2. Vultures 2 came out the blue, and that album did not sound good. If I'm being honest, it sounded like somebody not in their right state of mind. That album was a real mess. People is coining this album as Kanye West's worst album of all time. Like, this the nigga that made Graduation. How can he go from Graduation to Vultures 2? One person said, super upset for any Kanye fan. This album felt super soulless and empty. I believe this to not only be Kanye's first awful album, but one of the worst albums I've I've ever listened to the production is awful the features are boring the popular tracks on this album not even special it feel like kanye is just lazy enough to copy tropes from previous songs into new ones for example in fraud it's, it's easy to recognize the similarity of his recent hint carnivals off cultures one there's so much to say about this album like the horrible sound of bomb or the ai lyrics toward the end of the album the only song i would consider good is the opening track slide other than that the album is horrible. I'm not going to lie. This album was not hitting. It was a lot of garbage songs on there. And this coming from a nigga that really likes Kanye music and appreciated what he done did for the culture over the years. He had songs on there where he ai his own voice. Nigga, how are you on your own album and going to use AIU on the same song that you regular rapping on? And I'm not trolling. The internet had a field day with this album. The song Sky City, he definitely AI'd his voice. Genius wrote Sky City originated during sessions for Ye's abandoned knife album studio, Yandy. 
This song and the album was worked on from 2018 to 2019 and it was left in the dark until 2021 where Saha was given the song and recorded two reference verses for Ye. Controversially, the first of those verses was put through an artificial filter to replicate Ye's voice. Now, why didn't Ye just re-record the verse with his own voice? I don't know. And it doesn't make sense. Like, logically, I cannot think of why the nigga just wouldn't record a new verse for it. Why would you AI your own voice? I'm not hating. Just look at the comments on this song. Then on top of all that, I know sales don't matter, but sales for this project came out. And you got to remember who this is. This is Kanye West. Yeah, it might be a duo album. It might not just be under Kanye West, but for the first time in 20 years, Kanye West dropped the album that didn't go number one. He lost to Taylor Swift. And it's got people wondering, was him being on the Nitrous actually affecting how his music sounds? Because there is no reason why a Kanye West, why a brand new Kanye West album shouldn't go number one. This like a Drake album not going number one. I guess the only way we're going to know the truth and how everything is going for Ye is if he comes out himself and gives a statement on the whole situation or some actual proof comes out. I do hope that man get better and I'm curious as to how this dentist situation finna turn out. What are y'all thoughts?